Every day we learn a little bit more about COVID-19 and how the virus can spread. One suggestion for staying safe could be as simple as turning on a humidifier. Joining us this morning is infectious disease specialist, Dr. Stephanie Taylor. Good to speak with you this morning. Good morning. So this is a fascinating angle to the story. You say humidity has a three-pronged relationship with viruses. What can you tell us about that? Yes, it is absolutely exciting and effective. Um, we, we now know after many years and numerous studies that viruses are actually diminished in the airborne environment when you have the proper uh, range of humidity. And that happens to be a very comfortable mid-range of 40 to 60 percent relative humidity. And in this range, we now know that the air actually has fewer infectious particles. And in the case of COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes the disease um, is inactivated, relatively inactivated, when your indoor relative humidity is in that zone. And furthermore, the third prong is that our respiratory immune system is actually optimized when the relative humidity is around 50%, right in the center of that zone. And conversely, the way most buildings um, are managed, especially when it's cool or cold outdoors, we bring in outdoor air, heat it up, and that drops the relative humidity to around 20%. And at 20%, our immune system, especially our respiratory immune system, is actually sort of incapacitated. We're working against it. So it's an amazing um, humidifying your home, your office, your school, your hospital to this very uh, comfortable range, 40 to 60% is incredibly beneficial to people and diminishes the infectivity of, of viruses. Dr. Taylor, does that mean, just to make sure that I'm clear on this, does that mean that the higher the humidity level, the safer we are? Well, no, so it's not, um, you don't go on and on and on with your humidification. It's, there's a, a range, 40 to 60% relative humidity. That is very good for people and inactivates many viruses. So, but you definitely do not want to humidified at 80, 90 percent, then you'll be uncomfortable and you'll run into other problems. The aim here was to apply these learnings to buildings that contain people, like classrooms or hospitals, for example. Is the solution as simple as installing humidifiers in buildings like this? Absolutely. And it's, a, it's actionable, it's effective, it's, you know, relatively easy to do. So whether it's your home, your school, your hospital, your office building, any human-occupied buildings should be have their humidity in this range. Is this something that you practice at home, Dr. Taylor? Absolutely. <laughs> and it's, it's remarkable what a difference it makes. Um, neither my husband nor myself have been sick for the last four years when we've been uh, humidifying our home in northern Vermont. Uh, why is this something that's not more widely known or practiced? Oh my gosh, that's a fantastic question. Because we actually have known about the benefits of humidification for years. But I think the reason it's not more widely implemented is that in certain situations, it can be difficult. Um, if you have a cold outdoor climate, and you humidify the inside of your building. Unless you have impeccable insulation, you can have areas of condensation. There, if you have water in the liquid form, you can run into mold problems. Right. But for some, and it's also kind of anti-intuitive. A lot of people think, well, if you put water vapor in the air, isn't it sort of like water in your garden and you actually have more mm. bad things in the air? But the fact is there's this range that is very beneficial for humans uh, and, Dr. and decrease the bad ones. Dr. Sorry. Taylor, I want to thank you for coming on your morning and sharing this with us. Fascinating. Thanks a lot. Take, thank you.